Okay, so we are over with, uh, we start with Timothy Ferrelli on this one, and we are in segment three where we're going to explore monster and humanoid races. Now we're starting to get into wackadoodle stuff. You may as well skip me because I'm looking at these two questions and I can't answer either one because I've never allowed either one. Well, we'll try anyway. We'll okay. try. <laughs> well, we're going to start with Timothy Ferrelli, so you get to go last. Uh, as a player, what inspired you to play a humanoid monster or alien race in your campaign? And actually, Heathen Dog, you can answer this one because I'll, I'll give you the little, the little, your, your, uh, uh, oh, not Musagen. Yeah, yeah, much Battle Lords. Your floaty gray guy is an alien. I wasn't inspired to do that. I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to play a Musigen. It was the only way that, that that game allowed me to do what I wanted to do. So I was like, damn it. Fine. I'm a little gray alien little piece of crap. Fine. Okay, Raphael. Tanari, which are the, uh, the, the demons, right? They're the yeah, Tanari or the Abyss. Batsu, which are the devils. Those are all... The word demon is a generic term. <laughs> Freaking man, and Yugoloth are right in the middle. They're all evil pieces of crap. They're demons. That's a generic term. Demon. God. Oh, people and their autism, man. <laughs> Let's go on. Uh, so, uh, Timothy, as a player, what inspired you to play a humanoid monster or alien race in your campaign? What if it's what's the setting? What is what am I looking to do? Um in a futuristic sci-fi setting, you're going to, you know, there's a better chance of that maybe there is an orc society that went to the stars. But I mean, it could be Warhammer 40k-ish, could be whatever. Um, now, Phase World, play in Phase World, dwarves are in space in freaking submarines. I mean, um, it, it's, it's what I am, what am I looking to do? What um uh, what 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 looks to be the most fun? Um so uh yeah it's uh superhero games, you know, uh randomized, so I might end up with a alien in in a superhero game. Um and uh yeah, it's random randomization number one or what looks to be fun. Okay, so how do you incorporate the lore and culture of a monster or an alien uh, into your character? The that's, uh, in, in the example of a superhero game, um, you're definitely going to be a fish out of water. You're 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 going to be like uh, uh, Marvin, or uh, you're going to be like the the Martian. You're 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 not going to know anybody. You're going to be all alone. Uh, you're going to have the weight. You could have the weight of your entire species on your shoulders. Uh, and in regards to science fiction, it's going. It's like back to the how you interact and what's perceived of your race as a whole. Um, an orc, uh, the a spacefaring orc, could still be very militaristic, very aggressive. Uh, Might makes right. You know, I'm in charge. So, so where, where do did you play this uh, 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 spacefaring orc? Is this Warhammer? No, no, it was um, um, Starfinder. I might have been. Um, it was one of the. Uh, it's, it's been quite a while. I think it might have been Starfinder or, or such, something like that. Is when I made a. Because, uh, because uh, Planescape, or not Planescape, sorry, Spelljammer had this stupid ass scroll. Yeah, what they also spell orcs backward. Nobody will catch on. <laughs> they also have freaking talking walking hippos with with blunderbusses. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, yes. Uh, spell, uh, Spelljammer was retarded in every facet, and I'm embarrassed <laughs> yeah. to even own any of the books. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I think it was it was like a, a Starfinder esque setting somewhere. I, I don't know. It's been a, it's been so long, but uh, yeah, it's uh, when it comes to the science fiction, the advance. It's back to you know how how the how the universe perceives you. What are your 
uh, what is the main attributes of, of your race, species, you know, are, how aggressive are you? So. All right, Crafting Gamer, move on over to you. As a player, what inspired you to play humanoid, monster, or alien in your campaigns? Well, I haven't, most of the uh, few times I get to play, because most of the time I'm a forever GM, my, G, uh, my GMs are very, Ethan Dog, you're playing a human. Okay. Uh, the few times I've gotten to play uh, non-human, I usually end up gravitating towards uh, creatures such as the Rahuman that are more, like I said before, more support. Their prep mentality leads more, like I said, the support class than I, I'm going to kick your ass class. And those are the type of... Uh, I found when I'm reading, those are the types I really gravitate towards. The only aggressive one in the I'm not entirely sure why that I really like is the raw is wrong. The, is the what? The, oh, okay. The wolfen. Uh, the wolfen and the raw are my two non uh, my two, two favorite non human races. I can explain the raw I can't explain the wolfen. I just like the wolfen. I don't even know what a rot them in or raw or whatever it is you're saying is. He's a I, four I giant, which, which and you know, would hate him too, because he automatically gets psychic abilities. Uh, Palladium, I think it, I, I think he might have been introduced in the Palladium, no, the Palladium sort of uh, fantasy, I don't, uh, main book, I don't think it actually has it, but it's definitely in the Monsters Handbook, because it's a playable race there, and in the Gi uh, Giants of Mountain Numero book. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> oh. uh, what, uh, what techniques do you use to humanize monster characters without losing their distinctiveness? We actually touched on this, by the way, the conversation as a whole in the previous videos. Uh, not by directly trying to make them relatable, but more like um, well, like for example, we'll go to the orc that I was thinking about playing. He wouldn't have like a over emotional range, but he'd understand happiness comes, uh, how happiness works versus an orc I feel good when I cut. I don't know why. Well, not cut myself. I feel like I feel good when I fight, but I don't know why. He'll understand. Uh, I I feel good when I fight because I enjoy fighting. He'll understand that uh, good food tastes better than the garbage the orcs usually eat. So it isn't going to be like he's a huge difference, but it's going to be little things like that. Okay. All right, now... Heathen dog, did you come up with anything? <laughs> so, nope. so, so, how about this? Um, share a memorable experience of playing. That was a mutagen, right? Yes, it, it it was a mutagen, and that's yeah. in okay. in my memory. I I've been taking this time to think of any other humanoid monster or or alien race that I wanted to play. I can't think of one, except for that. And here's why I did it the human would not do what I wanted the human to do in that game. Right. But also in that game, all of the, all of the, uh, uh, humanoid races basically were all compatible with each other with some notable exceptions. So, you know, being, being, a, being a musogen wasn't a, uh, general, Oh, you're screwed with half the other races. Cause they hate musogens. Right? No. I didn't have to worry about that. And I, I had an automatic, uh, uh, kinship with, uh, with, uh, um, Adrian's character because he would carry me around, you know, like, a uh, uh, Wookiee style. And I, I would use him as a, as a, uh, a steady, uh, a, a tripod for my giant 50 caliber rifle. So I had, I had a friend, you know, I, I, I had some, some cool role play stuff. So I, and, and the, and they had, and the, the, the Mustgen had powers that I wanted. I saw the game. I saw these, these powers, the psionic powers, the energy control powers they have. And I was like, I want that. Well, you have to be a Mustgen. Damn it. So I did, but normally, no, man, I just, a human or demi-human. I've never played an orc, an ogre. Uh, I've, I've played lots of, 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 uh, heroes unlimited, 
And uh, while technically my my Superman S character was an alien, I made sure that he looked and acted just like a human, just like Superman did, you know, like just exactly the same because I didn't want to deal with that nonsense. Okay. And the whole uh, as a game master, what inspired you to include? I never do. I never have. Well, well we're, not, we're, game, not, we're not there yet. Hold on. We're there now because no, I got to get into things this. to do. <laughs> every every game I have game mastered, I have not allowed a monster race to be played. Uh, games you ran with me, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. Did you didn't? Yeah, you didn't run that game, but that. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, and all the games that I played that you ran. That was true. See, that's funny because I don't care if somebody says I only allow humans or I only allow X race. I don't have a problem with that as long as it makes sense to the setting. If somebody says, uh, 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 you know, I, I allow everything. OK, you know, cool. I mean, I just don't like things to be weird. Like, uh, so here's my example. Uh, when we swapped over from second edition to fifth edition, just for I left Germany, well, actually just for COVID hit, and we had to stop playing. I, I was about to be the bad guy. You know, part of me says I should have just stuck to my guns and been the bad guy. But, hey, uh, so this guy wants to play a cleric. Sweet. But he wants to be a bugbear. Why? Well, he just thinks it'd be neat to play a bugbear. Whatever. They're all looking at me like, I should have been like, no. Now, remember, I'm just a player. I'm not the game master here. You know, like, no, I don't want this. But I'm a player at the table. The game master is already okay with it. Everybody else wanted it. I was like, Whatever. I hated it. I hated not. I didn't actually hate the player. And to be fair, I didn't hate his character in terms of uh, of the character is dynamic in the party. But every time I saw his character, I was just like, I, this should be something I'm stabbing, not something that I'm asking yeah. for advice from. Exactly. Like having my back in battle. No, it's a monster. I'm not doing that. And uh, to, to to answer Edgelord's question. No, uh, if, if I'm game mastering Palladium, you are not playing on RCC in general. And definitely not a dragon hatchling in particular. It's not happening. I want to play a scarecrow. You want to play in somebody else's table. Step. Oh, I, I want to play a, a dragon hatchling, or I I, I want to play a uh, an an escaped splugorth high lord, whatever. Well, you want to play again at someone else's table. Get bent, bitch. Get out. It's not happening. That's it. Nope. No monsters allowed. All right, let's uh, hit some of the chat here. Uh, so, Heen Dog, I don't know what this is specifically about for races. Do you allow you? You must have started this. No, I, I just said that. Yeah, no, oh, okay. no, no monster race. It, basically, okay. if, if if you say I want to play any RCC in Palladium, my knee jerk reaction is get bent. That's that's my knee jerk reaction. Get get bent. That's it. This is one hundred percent true. In Shadowrun, he's part of the Humanist Polis Club. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm a human supremacist. I am. And you know what? Says, in, in real life, if we discovered aliens were real and they, they came down here and said, we want to uplift humanity to make the world a better place. I will be the guy screaming the loudest. It's a goddamn trap. The, good it's the whole serve humanity like the the real serve humanity like cooking humanity that that's that that's what they're gonna do and i'm gonna scream that until the day i am taken out by an alien sniper so in palladium fantasy says they're not really an rcc that's why he's asking okay well if a month like i said if it even says rcc my knee, knee jerk reaction is get bent but if, if it is a monster race a, i'm sorry. definitely going to say no trolls are technically player races in the giant's handbook but, uh, but they are a monster race. Mentality. So yes. no. Yeah. To be fair, if I were to run Palladium Fantasy, I wouldn't. I'd, you know, I'd actually go. Are we going to do an evil campaign or a good campaign? If we're doing an evil campaign, then you can be kobolds, gnolls, whatever else is in there. Uh, but no, I would not let an elf walk arm in arm with with a goblin. I just wouldn't allow that. That breaks too many. <laughs> too many windows and doors for me uh team and t only humans that would suck well this is I the funny thing heathen dog's <laughs> never been in one of my uh, team and t games because nope, I, I don't allow humans yeah it's true no i did play it i did i did play an anthropomorphic animal one time oh. i didn't like it because i don't like anthropo anthropomorphic animals i don't like it be a human or be an animal or be nothing 
that that that's my philosophy on the whole thing. What did you think of the scissor act from Battle Lords? Since that required me to be on all fours, it isn't like I was walking upright just with a cat face. I was literally an animal that could speak. Me as Brett would would rather kill you than look at you. There you luckily, go. I had, luckily, I had uh, uh, was it uh, line, <laughs> wherever I looked, that's where my gun aimed. So, yeah. uh, all right, let's uh, let's hit some of this other chat, and then uh, we are going to uh, move on. But we have another question, right? Yes, we do. Okay, so that one was asked. Boop. And then, uh, devils and demons are good according to Palladium fantasy to screw with the evil and dishonorable humans. What? What, what no. happened there? I, no. I don't know where you got that. But you, no. you should put it back in your butt where you okay. found it. Okay, no, no, it's. Pretty, I thought it was a trolling comment, and I just wanted to make sure because I'm not that versed with the uh, with the cosmology of Palladium. <laughs> uh, Palladium devils and and demons are bad for everyone who's not them. Just bad, all across the multiverse. You will not find anyone who's not a devil to say devils are good. I got their back. You know, there, there is no Hermione looking out for, for the devil's best interest, douchebag. No. Devils and demons are bad. They are a plague wherever they go. Oh, they'll say it, but they, they, they're a part of the devil, so you can't trust them. I'm a devil. I'm not that bad. Yes, you are. You're also a liar. Get back. This, this comment here is truer and actually did something even more egregious than what he wrote here. Mac Thompson says, Warcraft is what screwed up perspectives of monster versus player races, damn horde. Worse than that, I blame Dragonlance and World of Warcraft for the modern interpretation of gnomes. Go look at a gnome for AD&D 2nd Edition outside of Tinker Gnomes, and they're really like a hybrid elf-dwarf thing. They like nature, but they got some underground stuff too, you know, because they, you know, they can talk to squirrels, which is kind of cute. Um, I love gnomes. Gnomes are my favorite, the, the real gnomes, not the tinker gnomes and the World of Warcraft crazy gnomes and so forth. Uh, actually, is actually my favorite demo human race to play. But you don't see them anymore because everybody's leaned into the World of Warcraft. And I actually kind of blame Dragonlance a little bit for that with the stupid tinker gnomes. Same thing with Hated Godwin, the tinker though. gnomes even when I read them back then. It's the same thing with goblins, you know. Go, you know the Warcraft goblins. Same thing as no, boom, blowing stuff up. So, and uh, that also plays into Palladium. Why that you have the the good races and then you have the bad races, and there's still parity in there because kobolds are the second best manufacturers uh, craftsmen in the world behind dwarves, and no, no, uh, hu no humanoid, no good person. Is going to deal with a kobold. They will kill them on sight. What is this? Titan gnome? Okay, the word Titan and gnome is an oxymoron. I'm out. Like a juicer. <laughs> titan gnome. What is he? Four foot tall instead of two foot tall? What? What is? What is he? <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. Let's uh, let's go on into the next question. He Dog already answered it, even though he wasn't supposed to go first. So we're just going to start with uh, uh, Timothy. For, no, we're going to just move on to yeah, to Timothy Fairley because I'm put Heathen Dog stole the limelight there. Uh, Timothy Fairley, uh, as a game master, what inspired you to include humanoid monster or alien races in your campaigns and by the way an answer can't be because sci-fi no no give us a good reason well it, the reason is it's a the world is a living thing you interact with a multitude of individuals you're going to interact with the multi with the dwarves you're going to interact with elves uh you're going to interact with uh and in, especially in science fiction you very well could be interacting with the bad guy with uh uh of space orcs or uh, the whatever that Kruger type uh, space alien is in the space world that Krigor whatever something like that um, it's not it's not my main <laughs> setting whatever um, um, you're gonna have and in, in especially rifts you're gonna have quick flex aliens you're gonna have all these DBs the players to choose from that are not overpowered uh, uh, freaking dragons so they can still be a normal relatively normal mortal being like the quick flex alien so uh yeah it's it's the living world you're going to interact with them so you know put, throw them in there have fun uh how do you now remember you're doing this as a game master so you can be talking about your player characters or, or npcs in the world how do you differentiate humans 
and monster races in terms of role playing. Uh, the, Somebody's got a dog boy. Yeah. That's, yeah, but he's the best of the dogs. Um, the, the humans are going to your average vanilla run of the mill individuals. Your monsters, you're going to be you're, you're going to be starting off with more factors. You're going to be start, starting off, you know, wanting to run them out of town. So. And you, uh, treat them like the like they are the monsters that they are. Okay. I, I and I I don't understand person one like that sounds like fun. Does that well, sound like fun to you? Yeah, that sounds like fun to me. I want to yeah. play that. I do. I, I, that's what fun to me. Yes, I am crazy. Yes. Okay. Yes, I. Right. I mean, to, to be honest, I often I've played an ogre in a game. I've played. Uh, what else have I played? I, I played a Thrycreen. Stupid Dark Sun. But you know what? Dark Sun is its own parody, so I just parried it more. Um, I, I like playing those off the wall races, but I also I don't. I, demand is not the right word. I highly encourage, and I talk with my game master, or my dungeon master, and say, "Look, I'm doing this for the purposes of I. Yeah, I kind of want to play in hard mode. I played a million elves. I played a million humans. I played a million uh, normal stuff." You know, where we just bebop around and do our little story thing or we, you know, do our hex crawl, whatever. I'm doing this for the purposes of I want to be treated as this race should be treated. I don't want to be given a free pass. You know, I also don't want you coming after me just because. And usually they've accommodated that. They they was like, oh, okay, yeah, that actually makes sense because in my world, this race is treated a certain way. Um a friend of mine, I don't I don't know for friends, we haven't talked in years, but uh we, we didn't part on bad terms. That so a lot of people heard the story about me being kicked out of a game, yada yada. So it was with uh, his game. He took Forgotten Realms, moved it into the future. He changed the races. He didn't want elves and dwarves and gnomes. Completely redesigned the races after this major cataclysm happened and basically genetically altered you know the entire world except for humans. And I played a race. I think he called it the Flossed, and he didn't actually have a background for it. He's like, this is what I have written down. This is a little bit. I say, like, I don't know much after that. I ended up designing his race for him just through role playing it. And so, yeah, I played it differently than humans, but I incorporated things that we would recognize from humans, you know, ancestor worship. I'm not going to go the whole thing, but they're just as an example, literally worshiping ancestors and using shamanistic abilities based on ancestor worship. So it can be fun to play those things, but I was also a weird... I don't remember what they look like. I'll be honest with you, 100% don't remember. But they were weird looking. So anytime I went somewhere, oh, what the hell is that weird? It's a monster. Kill it. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'd have to go hide, or the other people have to go talk first, and so forth. You know, It was just part of of the nature of the world, especially since he made it post-apocalyptic. I actually, I, I find personally, I find that stuff fun. That's why I like post-apocalyptic games that include things like mutants, like, you know, mutants, uh, um, not mutants, not, well, mutants down under, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think mutant Chronicles, mutant crawl classics. There we go. Mutant, uh, mutant crawl classics. I like games like that because now you're in a world where, ew, you're fugly, man. <laughs> like, you know, but, so I, so I get it. My point is I get it. And, and when you get that town to, even grudgingly accept you. That is a major victory for the player. So you, you, there's that aspect to, to deal with as well to get to turn people's opinion based off of your actions. Just real quickly, are these the ones with the 36 movement rate? Something really ridiculous. <laughs> Like, I forget if it's them or not, uh, but and mulls. You know what? I respect mulls and dark sun folks because it's not named dwarf or giant or furbolg or whatever. They came up with their own thing and named it their own thing. But moving on here. Uh, all right. So I think we're on the crafting gamer. Are we on the crafting gamer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a game master, what inspired you to include humanoids, monsters, or alien races in your campaigns? Uh. Well, obviously the simple answer is it's the setting, but in the end, it's also the type of story I want to build because Palladium, just like D&D, has so many actual races, both play, not as many as D&D, but still has so many playable races and monster races that you can build an entire feel without having to use all of them. So it's more based off the feel I want to give to the game. Like, I occasionally, I do like the Drizzt style story, so I might put in well, actually, I did one time. Uh, an orc that was smart enough to take over a small elven village. Uh, he got backlash, obviously, but 
that that would be a very rare thing. And it's the feel I wanted to give the game. You know, you have to be careful. Occasionally you get these ridiculously smart and dangerous orcs. And so what, what okay. usually, like I said, what usually inspires me is the feel for the game. I, I want it to feel like this. So how do you handle the uh, moral and ethical considerations of playing monster races or completely alien species that they might have different, uh, we'll say, d different rites and rituals, you know, like, I don't know, eating the heart of your enemy or shrinking the heads or <laughs> whatever that might not sit well with a normal group of, uh, of players. Well, as a player, uh, there's an excellent example. There was a race I um, read in Palladium. Oh, I forgot which one. It was one of the Palladium sci-fis. Uh, a race that uh, views death very much in the natural order of things. Even if a lover is killed, they're not likely to seek revenge. But where this comes in is the fact that uh, if a player character goes down, they're likely to go, oh, they're going to die. Munch, munch, munch. They'll leave other player characters. And I, as a player, I would play that off as, I can't, I hate to say it, but I'm sorry, but it's kind of what my character has to do. It says it in the book. I'm sorry. More, uh, even if it's more like, okay, if you have to kill me because you don't like that, I guess I'm making a new character, provided you win. Yep. Did I mean, did the did the GM, players know yeah. about that character at the beginning? Because that seems like one of those things that I would have to sit down and, well, sit and make I, sure I that the get, players are. I didn't are... get a chance to, but yeah, I didn't get a chance okay. to. But I would, as player, I would definitely. I, like, I never got a chance to play this, but as a player, I would definitely make sure you guys know from the beginning. That is my moral stance on such things. That that's fair. Like, I, yeah. And as a GM, I would say that you have. If okay, you can play that. But when the but when you the PCs turn on you says, and burn you at the stake, and you have to make sure don't come bitching at me. Yep, willing to do. Yeah, I I think of of yep. PC monsters exactly as player characters as pedophiles. Whoa, Sooner whoa, whoa, whoa. or later, you're going to get caught. You're going to jail, and you're getting shipped. It's going to happen. <laughs> and we're demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thanks a lot of you, the dog. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I, again, I don't mind as long as you're willing to play in hard mode. I, I uh, you know, again, I, if the players in the group are like, "Look, we don't want this kind of campaign. We want to play something more traditional," then I wouldn't allow it because I lean towards the traditional side. But if somebody were to come to me now, I've learned that there are certain humanoid races. I've mentioned this one a lot of times in streams. The Wemmick. Everybody wants to play the Wemmick in the eight and second edition. If you get the humanoids handbook, <laughs> it is absolutely overpowered. I think you start at like fifth level or something like that. I, I forget. It's been a long time, but no, I'm not going to allow that. But you know, you can maybe make a case for a centaur. Probably not. But what's the purpose of this? Let's be honest. I I ran a D and D game again. You guys, a lot of you've heard this before, but for the people who may not have, I allowed somebody. It took them hours. Just like it took Garthon hours to convince me to allow him to play that orc. Um, it And orcs actually exist in that world. But uh, it took him hours, but he convinced me to let him play a fairy dragon. It didn't fail. The, the party loved the character. He played the character wonderfully. Didn't solve everything for everybody because, you know, it's a fairy dragon. He's going to have some power. Used his breath weapon, made him high all the time because they were injured. You know, stuff like that, you know. But he he played the character innocently and it worked out. It's not going to work out for everybody. And just a lot of times players are going to see the stuff be like, you know what? I thought it was a neat idea. It was a little quirky, but this just isn't working out. If you're the one playing the oddball, you might, not might, you have to be the one to say, you know what? Okay, it's not fitting in. Let's let's do something that fits in better. It shouldn't be the other players that have to cater to you. If that makes sense. So. What's up? Sorry, kid. Okay. Uh, is that all the questions? That looks like all the questions. Uh, Heathen Dog, do you want to at least try a follow-up or no? Sure, lay it on me. Okay, can you describe a scenario where a monster or alien... Remember, sci-fi games have a lot of aliens. It could be a sure, Star Trek sure, alien, okay? you know. Sure. Yep. Can you describe a scenario where a monster or alien player character influenced the game's direction mm -hmm. significantly? Yes. 
it was all a dream. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, that's, that's, that, that, that was just the example of the worst thing a, a game master can do. It was all a dream. No, uh, the 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 only way an alien or or a monster will will significantly impact gameplay is if it's the bad guy. I mean, that's obvious, right? Monsters are the bad guys. The demon lord is a is a is a humanoid monster. But he significantly impacts the game because he's the main bad guy. So he 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 makes all the all the, you know, bad guys move moves and stuff well, like the, that. The question and, did specifically yeah. say player character. But, <laughs> Oh God! Would you consider my wolfin a monster? Because yes. Okay, then if you remember, how many times in a row did I get natural twenties and beat boss mobs for everybody? Because it's the only. Oh, one. That's not because you're a wolfin. It's because you're a I, cheater. No, it's because I was a wolfin. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled three twenties in a row, and Garth was like, "That's great." It has nothing to do. No, 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 nothing I, to do but, with. But I'm with, trying with to throw you, you a, a bone pedophile. here. Wolfin pun intended. I'm trying to throw you a bone. <laughs> If you uh, it's not working and that analogy didn't work either <laughs> <laughs> the throwing the bone thing did not work either no uh i don't i don't allow monster classes because they're monsters man i don't know what to tell you sky's fair. blue monsters are monsters i don't know no that's fair uh, that's that's fair okay. i don't know how else to say it I'm just trying I mean, to see if we can squeeze something out of you but okay <laughs> i mean if and this increasingly hypothetical situation would never happen but if i allowed as a as a game master a monster class as a player character i i imagine at some point my plan is to have it be betray the party to teach the party a valuable lesson monsters are monsters and can't be trusted that's what i would do okay you guys got any back and forth comments you want on that? Because that is the last question in this, uh, you know, talk about uh, monster races in games. Any, any follow-ups you guys want to do? Okay. Well, the yeah. next topic, the final topic, is going to be a tips and advice for new players. Heathen Dogs is going to say, don't do it. But we'll see don't if we can get it. more out of him than, <laughs> than that. <laughs> He's like, you know what, I got to go, don't do it. No, uh, it was going to be tips and advice for new players when uh, dealing with humans, humanoids, demo -human demo -human uh but before we do that let's hit some of the chat uh actually oh no did i did i skip it i did skip it so i have to go back i completely bypassed this <laughs> the edge lord uh don't do it heathen dog don't do it i know what you want to do i want to ban him i want don't, dude, time don't out. do it no Let timing time out. out no timing no. out this isn't fine. sunday fine <laughs> uh, just as a reminder, some rando RPG live stream airs live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time, except for the last Friday of the month. Once this live stream ends, the full live stream will remain available only to YouTube members, while these four discussion segments will post later, uh, a month later, uh, for the public. Uh, just as, you know, if Rumble ever gets a members-only type session, there I will have members-only versions of that as well. Come on, Rumble, get on that one. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, oh, we got some super chats popping in. That's awesome. Yeah. So we'll we'll take a look at those in just a moment. But uh, yeah, if if uh, if you like what you're seeing here and want to watch it live and chat with us, you know, Raphael and I, yeah, we had a little back, but but understand that's nerd talk, and we even kind of mentioned that in comments while these guys were speaking. So all good. We have some fun here. The only thing that's going wrong today is I forgot to tell Heathen Dog we're not supposed to cuss as much on Friday anymore. But I also oh, yeah, it's Friday. sorry. That's sorry. fine. It's fine. It's too late now. And he used the P word. So let's uh, let's get to uh, our comments here. Uh, let's start with super chats that popped in. Polly, oh, you already put it on the screen. <laughs> Even though chase the bow. That's right. Yeah, that that I did not. I did. I did not like that turn of phrase. <laughs> for 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 uh, uh, twenty dollars. Thank you very much for the twenty eight dollars, Polly. Just to remind folks, if we hit a hundred dollars, there will be a hundred dollar giveaway. Because we're up to hundred dollars now, uh, weird guy for five dollars. Thank you very much, weird guy. Good to see you here. Popping in late. Hopefully you can watch this stuff late. Oh, you're a member, I think, so you can watch whenever you want. But he and Dog Watsy said there are no monsters. Check your human privilege. Okay, yep. all right. I'm not going to say the p word again. <laughs> but if if Jeffrey Dahmer came up to you and said, "No, no, no. There's no such thing as cannibals. Come to my house. Let, let's 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 watch some Netflix." <laughs> You're the idiot that would say yes. 
<laughs> I'm the guy who says, nah, I think you're a liar. Just like I, I, I tell Watsy when, when, when Watsy says, oh, no, we're a role-playing game company now. No, you're not. You're a ruiner of lives now. Shut your hole. And they're also making orcs spectacles. Hey. <laughs> That's true. Uh, to Law Dog for $20. Thank you very much, uh, Law Dog. A donation to Heathen Dogs Coalition State's Outreach Program because they're the good guys. <laughs> they <laughs> are the good We should script a commercial. I know, right? People don't get it. The coalition, while while you know, from our seat of I'm going to use the word privilege, of not growing up in a post-apocalyptic <laughs> wasteland, then 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 you have the high horse to sit on and say, oh, they're not doing the right thing. They're bad guys. They're fascist. They're awful. The world wants to kill you. You have to galvanize morons to work together no matter what. You do that through easy, easily remembered rhetoric. And it works every time. They're keeping humanity alive. I don't know and what to tell you, you man. If you look at the oh, I'm sorry, go on. I don't know. I don't know what, what for, for all the naysayers, I don't know what to tell you. But if you look at the worked. history of the world through all time, the entire world has been evil. By today's yeah. weird standards. Yes. Everything yeah. that came before is evil. We are such special snowflakes to pop out of fuck of freaking nothingness. And just now, now, now we, we, we levitate above everyone else because we are so woke and good. Shut up. Shut. My only real stop, complaint stop sniffing about your own sport. farts and drinking your own piss. I don't <laughs> want to hear it. My only real complaint about the coalition is you're not allowed to read because that means you don't get role playing games. That is that that's fair, and you know what? Really? I hate that too. But I also I also understand the point that if you can read, you can you can get information that isn't good information, and become bad. There, there there's uh, um, in his drunken stupor. <laughs> Francois de Rocher last uh, last show, so two weeks ago, actually had a pretty good counter to that in terms of they can't have everybody completely 100% illiterate because if they were, they wouldn't be able to make Samus suits. Right. So, so there's a limitation to it, but there's no way that they would that, that they could exist. He explained it better. You can go watch that. It's not public yet. It'll be public in a couple weeks, but uh, uh the, he made a very good point on that. There wouldn't be a 100% li literacy. You couldn't have a society that even functioned if you did that. Just yeah, there, there, there actually is in, in, in the, in the Palladium books, there is the lower class and, and lower middle class are not taught to read the upper middle class and higher. They right. actually go, go to special universities to teach them to read, to be specialized technicians, to be, coalition scientists to be military uh, officers there we go then the people who need things. to read can read it's all good exactly if you need to read you can read if you don't need to read then it what what every computer in the coalition for you is is the exact same as a mcdonald's cashier have you ever looked at at a, at a mcdonald's cash machine that the, that the the cashier uses yeah. it's all pictures it's I used all to work pictures. At McDonald's. <laughs> pictures of fries, pictures of burgers, pictures of Big Mac, whatever. They just press the, the little picture button like the monkeys they are. That that's exactly what the lower class of coalition is, is is treated because that is exactly what they're capable of. I wish I had pictures when I worked there. I had to read text that was like two point font. To, which one quarter pounder with cheese? Quarter pounder cheese. Oh crap. Like no, quarter idiotic. pounder grilled yes, cheese. Shuko, exactly that. <laughs> Uh, like idiocracy, yes. Um, so, well, this isn't quite a super chat, but put this generous super chat toward the goal. Thank you very much for becoming a member. Appreciate that. You now have access to like over 4,000 videos. Good luck. Uh, YouTube gave us like this members only section now where people can go find members only videos. So good on YouTube for something there. Oh, and YouTube is going to put out a hype button. Apparently you're going to get three per month that you can use. Guess where you should use two of them. Friday and Saturday, uh, Sunday. There you go, Friday. And Friday. There you go. I don't care. We use the third one. Um, 
So, but Edgler, just to let you know, I won't be doing it for today. I don't do it with members, but for the next at least three weeks, probably four, because I think it ends at midnight, whatever, uh, you will be automatically entered into giveaways. So, unfortunately, not today. You just have to because, be here. But yeah, well, yeah. Well, he's he's been here last few weeks. It's, yeah, well, I know. Twice, well, twice in a row. Twice in a row, he made it. Uh, let's uh, hit some more of these super chats. Law Dog says coalition states forbid playing of demo humans in any game uh, within their borders. Well, that's why he and Dog loves them. <laughs> yeah, except for dog boys because they're properly trained. But so what you're saying is that there is a skill for tabletop RPGs only reserved for the elite of the coalition state. Yes, yeah, yes. There you and go. It, hey, it's hey, called hey. war games. Yeah, there you go. Now you're thinking. See, there you go. Then uh, Law Dog also says, or become a member and watch it now. That is true. You could go yeah. watch last week's episode right now. Or not last week. I, we didn't. Did members only? Ago. Well, actually, we had members only last week, but then, yeah, two, two weeks ago, you can watch the full thing, and you can watch uh, Timothy Ferrelli and Malachi not say anything, and uh, and what's his name, Francois de Rochier, talk for seven hours. <laughs> I, I did say something. I made a pull. I made a I made a butt of myself. Did you? I don't remember that, but okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. You can watch him make an ass of himself in front of the camera, and uh, I used to demand a picture menu at McDonald's. That's funny. Thank you for the two dollars. Um, yeah, I, when I was a teenager, it was in 1988 to 1990, I worked at McDonald's. When you still had to flip the burgers, they didn't have topside cookers. You used to have flipping races. Anyway, uh, there's a couple that were not super chat. Oh, we just got another super chat in, so hold on. No, reading. I mean, I do not have to answer another innate email ever again in the coalition. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. That's that's <laughs> great. Yeah, you don't have to wade through all those spam emails and you know Nigerian princes and oh your your Coinbase account has 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 been possibly breached. Please give me your password. Nonsense. Yeah, that it's easy mode. Uh, on the flip Lower side, class though, coalition citizens live under the umbrella of almost perpetual safety given by the coalition. All you have to do is go to work, go home, not hit your wife, ra raise your kids to, to be good coalition citizens, and they'll leave you alone. But so, what, is that? What's it? Join the ProSec Youth Club. There you go. Uh, keep, keep in mind that meeting that could have been solved in an email is definitely happening. Uh, what the coalition has battle cats and kill cats? Was he man now? Oh, yeah, I know, there. right? They're down in Texas. Yeah, they're they're a thing. <laughs> Emperor Prosex, say, like, I am the power. <laughs> yeah, he probably does. <laughs> All right, I got a couple more, and then we're moving on to the next segment here. Thank you, by the way. Thank you, everybody, for the super chat. So, uh, where are? Oh, I don't have it. I don't have it up right now. I can get it in just a moment. Um, so uh, where are we here? Uh, so that's the thing, Max. M most PCs I played with don't have a clue how to play any other race. They play a human with a skit. Right. Uh, now, now, the funny thing is, and I'll get these guys to jump in because they all joined the hobby at different times. You know, Heathen Dog being really old, he's a little bit more recent, but, you know, staggered along. Um, we didn't have such a problem back then. Why? Because races, class kind of told you what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to think, even if you didn't yeah. understand the entirety of the of the race itself. We all read Lord of the Rings, you know, in The Hobbit, so that helped as well. And let's be honest, Gygax even got sued by the estate, so, you know, because of the word Hobbit. And then moving on, AD&D &D first edition, you had level limitations, the second edition raised those limitations, but you still had those limitations, which kind of said, hey, it, it guided you to play an elf like an elf. Be, because as as a player you want to be able to reach the pinnacle of power but mm -hmm. if you if you are playing a a dwarven cleric you will never reach a pinnacle of power compared to to the to the uh human uh to the human anything or the or the elf wizard or the dwarf fighter or whatever you're going to be stuck at level 8 9 10 to 12 whatever and you'll never go up. so so the game actually funneled you to play a dwarf correctly or an elf correctly the way they but, wanted you to. But you're seeing that progression, the, the the development of how these races, how these species, how these classes develop as the the setting the, the, the games go on. Second edition was very much these are what the dwarf does, these are what you're allowed to do. Third edition, okay, have fat and have fun. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I'll tell the story again. And started being being Watsy fantasy game version one. 
Yep. But, but, but I got the book literally in my hand, opened it up. It said that we don't we don't limit race by cl- or class by race. I said, this is commie role playing and toss the book. Yeah, that was in I, 2000 or 1999, whenever it came out. Uh, but but here's the difference between I hear what you're saying, Timothy Frehley, but 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 here's a little bit of a difference in this. While basic did have races class, right, to make mm-hmm. life, I guess, simple, I don't know. AD and D first edition, I would argue that most of the level limitations are actually too harsh. Now, that's an opinion, and I'm not going to sit here and say it's a bad game. I don't believe that in any way, shape, or form. But it just has an example. Dwarf cleric. Do you know what it meant to be a dwarf cleric in first edition AD and D? It was like what? Max of 10 levels? Nope. Level NPC. 10? Dwarf really? had clerics. You just couldn't be one. Oh, well, okay. Fair enough. Fair so, enough. And some of the level limitations were really low, like six. Now, if you're playing a one shot or a short term campaign, no problem. But if you're looking for that long term, eh. so I actually liked what second edition did. Still kept level level limitations, gave you some optional rules to kind of bend those a little bit. And of course, multi-classing, yeah. which is kind of what you're supposed to do. It was, it was a- attribute modifiers for level. If you had a 16, 17, 18 in the in the in all the prerequisites of a class, you can get level higher or two levels. Yeah, yeah higher well, that was one of them. another one is you could triple the XP to for each additional level. They, they had uh, optional ones in there that you could yeah. use. Yes, uh, and and I'm and I'm for that to some degree, but it still had you maintain the tropes. Some things were just off limits. Why can't dwarves be wizards, Victor? If you're watching. Because they're inherently magic resistance. It doesn't make any sense. For every three and a half points of constitution, first of all, I have 20% chance of any item you use of just going nope on you. Yeah. Magic items just don't work. Whether right. you use them or it's, they're used on you, right? Right. They just don't work. And then three uh, for every point of constitution, three and a half points of constitution, you got a plus one bonus to your magic save. <laughs> so, I mean, like, they are little walking anti-magic bubbles. That's why they couldn't cast spells. It, so it, it all, you know, it was just for game mechanics. No, it, it kind of made sense or game balance. No, it actually made sense. So anywho, let's um, unless you guys have any final comments on this, let's move on to our segment four. So I can say thank you to folks here and you know for subscribing. Yeah, please uh, like subscribe and share if you if you like this discussion, even if you don't agree, if you like the discussion, have your own inputs, put it in the comments. Uh, like this video, subscribe to all the panelists channels, which you can find in the description. We don't do these discussions to be in an echo chamber. We do these discussions. That's why I kind of did argue if it's in this video or the previous one with Raphael. Because we want people to come out with their uh, uh, other opinions. Yes, I hate Planescape. Yes, I hate Spelljammer. I think they're god awful. I used to hate Dark Sun. Now I like it because it makes you know more modern people squirm. But I still don't like it conceptually. It's not Dungeons and Dragons. Great setting if it wasn't Dungeons and Dragons. You might differ on that. Let us know, and you're allowed to have those differing opinions. <laughs>